Hi guys, I'm Maylin Dovan, Certified Athletic Therapist and Founder of Rehab U Movement and Performance Therapy. I want to talk about the overemphasis on stretching with tendinopathy. Um, many of the people who come to me with tendinopathy, and just to make it simple, let's give the example of, for example, patellofemoral tendinopathy, uh, they've always been given quad stretches. Okay, so they're given quad stretches like side lying quad stretch or couch stretch or, or anything like that to deal with tightness in the quads contributing to their patellofemoral tendinopathy. Um, the problem with that is a little bit twofold in the sense that, um, well, tendons don't need stretch. <laughs> for, for, for one, tendons don't need stretch, they need, they need stiffness. Um, but the other thing is that if you, if you um, stretch the muscle, most of the stretch positions that you use will put the tendon under compressive load. For example, if you do a quad stretch, um, your quad tendon will become compressed over the femoral condyle and tendons uh, that are irritable don't like compression. So you're kind of just creating more irritation over a tendon that's irritable, okay? The other thing about um, using a passive stretch is the idea when we're dealing with tendinopathy is we wanna work Yes, we need to consider the tendon. There's a tissue issue with the tendon and we need to consider that. But uh, from a more global point of view, what we need to consider is that muscle tendon coordination. So what we need to do is work on uh, deceleration mechanics, essentially. What we're trying to do is we're, we're trying to get the muscle to um, unload the tendon of extra work. Okay, so we need the muscle to do its job in helping the tendon, right? So. Yes, there can be issues with the quads, there can be um, tightness issues with the quads that contribute to patellofemoral tendinopathy, for example. Um, and we are going to want to deal with that because in particular, we're going to want to deal with the belly of the muscle or, or deal with the muscle if we find that the gliding of the fascia, that slide and glide of the fascia, uh, is contributing to that loss of coordination between the muscle and the tendon. So we have to work on the muscle tendon unit and not just the tendon and not just the muscle, okay? So with that in mind, um, the idea is if you want to deal with soft tissue limitations with the quads in patellofemoral tendinopathy, now's the time to use your soft soft tissue release stuff. Now's the time to use your self myofascial release. This is the time for a foam roller. This is the time for you to use um, a tool <laughs> wisely, okay? A tool to alleviate some tension and increase that fascia sliding and gliding. Now's the time to use uh, your, little, your little cups if you have them. Now, uh, as a therapist, these are, these, are, these are things you can do and more and more uh, athletes now have their own stuff. Um, I think it's just important to show them how to use it appropriately, but there's the time to use that. But something as simple as just using the foam roller on the quads will work instead of going for passive stretching, okay? Now the other aspect that we work, want to work on when I, work, when I mention deceleration is that's what we really want to get out of stretching out the quads for patellofemoral tendinopathy. We're trying to help it create tension in a stretched position so that it can help decelerate, so that it can take some work off of the tendon, so that it, the tendon doesn't become overloaded, so that we can improve that coordination. That's why eccentrics are so popular in tendon rehab, because we're working on that deceleration component, okay? So understanding that the tendon doesn't like compression, so we're not gonna use a static stretch and that we need to, to work on the muscle creating tension at a longer length. Um, yes, we can use uh, eccentrics. We can manipulate our exercises too and play around with the moment arm at the knee. How much do I let the knee come forward over the toes? Because the more the knee comes forward over the toes, the more knee flexion I get, the more compression I'm gonna get also with my exercises. But you can manipulate that, okay? So after you've improve that, that fascial gliding and sliding, you can use an exercise like a step down to work on those deceleration mechanics. So what we're trying to do is work on, start to work on decelerating. Now, and you can play around with a step down in many ways. So if he steps down right next to his foot, he's gonna get that much moment at the knee. If that's too much, he can step down back a little bit and now he's getting a little bit less. Come back up and bring your foot back a little bit further. 
Yeah, so now he's gonna get, it's gonna be a little bit more hip dominant. He's gonna get less moment at the knee. Come back up. And then if he tolerates that well, and we need to progress that, he can go in front, and now he's getting a lot of forward movement at the knee, okay? So we start to progress that, okay? Without having done stretches for the quad, but progressing him into more tension in a stretch position, progressing him into more moment arm at the knee. Now, another thing that you might include in your integration, how you manipulate your exercises for patellofemoral tendinopathy, he could use a forward lunge. So let's say he grabs the dumbbells. We can grab the dumbbells. Now we can do a forward lunge where, and the, the, for, the idea of a forward one, lunge is important because there's that deceleration aspect. We can do a forward lunge where we don't let the knee move past the toes, so we can control that moment arm and come back and back again. And then we can progressively let him come forward more with the knee and increase that, okay? So there's another way that you manipulate also your exercises based on increasing that moment arm at the knee and increasing the deceleration demand of the muscle tendon unit, okay? So as a recap, you can put the dumbbells down if you like. As a recap, we don't need to be doing static stretching for tendons, um, for tendinopathy. That said, there can be soft, a soft tissue contribution. We wanna have better muscle tendon coordination. And for that to happen, the muscle, the fascia needs to have the good sliding and gliding. So we can use uh, self myofascial release for that instead of a passive stretch that would put the tendon under com compression, okay? Uh, that being said, in the balance of our strategy, you know, we will need to put that, that tendon under load eventually so we can progress our exercises based on that. So now we're creating that space in our mobilization sequence using our soft tissue stuff. In the activation, you would reactivate the quads, potentially using a step down. Um, earlier phases might be a, a terminal band extension. And then in your integration phase, manipulating your exercises to slowly uh, increase the deceleration demands of the exercise and also slowly increase how much you let the knee come forward, okay? So it's not about just stretching a muscle. We don't get tendinopathy because a muscle is tight. We, can, we get tendinopathy because of a number of factors, including muscle tendon coordination that we need to work on um, within our strategy to deal with those um, tendinopathy issues.